corner where I try to make some sense out of nonsense and today is Thursday. So if you can hear me, let me know. Um, and if you can see me, uh, say for show. Now, um, let me see here. Make sure all my stuff is working. Uh, I see people hand clapping. That's good. I'm assuming you can hear me and I'm assuming that you can see me because I got to get busy. Yeah, man. <laughs> Something derailed my whole storyboard I put together tonight at the last second. At the last second. Made me mad, y'all. So I got to really get loose for this, man. Dang on it. I want the green now guys let me go through this real quick so we can jump into this mess that's going on around the country man got me burning up um if this your first time joining the show please subscribe to the channel make sure you set your notifications to all and also uh hit that like button and follow me on all the other social media platforms there is a link below the video and also i do have a merch store which is called kevin's corner store check it out you can get all kind of stuff in there and um this number 330-974-4607 text maga to that and you will stay connected with me just in case they don't like what I'm about to talk about. They probably won't. And <clears throat> finally, I do a monthly fundraiser, which the link is below the video as well. You can contribute to that. I think I maybe have about eight days or something left. Now, guys, remember the other day when creepy, sleepy, sleazy, slimy, sloppy Joe <clears throat> had the nerve to be up there at the State of the Union and uh, mentioned something about some illegal immigrant who killed a young lady, an American, okay? Um, and Joe Biden, you know, thought he was saying her name and, you know, but he messed up and said, you know, by a legal immigrant. See, he messed up and said by a legal immigrant. And then he came out and did this. Remember, he came I noticed out the this. look of surprise on your face when you walked into the chamber and you saw Congresswoman Marjorie Taylor Greene. Um, it was priceless. You feigned shock at, at seeing her. But during your response to her heckling of you, you used the word illegal when talking about the man who allegedly killed um, uh, Lake and Riley. An undocumented person. You see, you see the jelly back? You see this sellout to our whole country? Do you hear this traitor? Do you hear this man talking about uh, uh, undocumented, undocumented? I, I meant to say undocumented. Yeah, that guy right there. And I shouldn't have used illegal. I shouldn't have, un I shouldn't have used illegal. OK, and then y'all remember that I played a clip about last week sometime with AOC talking about uh, Republicans are making a big to do of nothing because uh, this is not an invasion and all of that stuff. Yeah, she's talking about, you know, we're exaggerating, blowing it out of proportion. It's not an invasion. We're just xenophobic. And then this guy comes out and says, let's not call him illegal. Let's just call him, you know, undocumented. Undocumented. And look, when I spoke about the difference between Trump and me, one of the things I talked about on the border was that his, the way he talks about vermin, the way he talks about these people polluting the blood. I talked about what I'm not going to do, what I won't do. I'm not going to treat any, any, any of these people with disrespect. Not going to treat any of these people with disrespect, right? Okay. How about how they're treating our country? Do you think it's respectful? Uh-huh. I mean, what would happen if you showed up at somebody's door unannounced and say, here I am with all my family members. Uh, we're out here to spend a night like the Griswolds Christmas vacation. Uh-huh. Yeah, you show up like Cousin Eddie. Uh, hey, Clark. Uh, you wonder if we could stay a couple weeks? Yeah, no, you know, didn't bring nothing. No food. Nothing. Just, I mean, we're going to be living off of you for a few weeks. Would you be okay with that? That wouldn't be considered rude. Uh, but uh, disrespectful. But here he is. Not going to treat these people with disrespect. Well, well, well. Look, they built the country. They built the, the country. Our economy is growing. We they didn't build the country. These people are coming from another country. They had nothing to do with the building of our country. And in fact, you and your buddies are tearing the whole country down by bringing all these illegals here. Now, if you don't believe me, remember. They've been out there telling everybody it's not an invasion. The border's secure. Oh, wait, it ain't secure. Well, it's Trump's fault. It's the Republicans' fault. We tried to fix it. And by the way, 
Don't y'all have the nerve to be calling this an invasion or calling these people illegal? No. We have to control the border and, and more orderly. We got to control the border. We got to do that. You heard the you heard the puppet. We got to control the border. I, I don't share his view at all. So you you regret using that word? Yes. Uh, yeah. Well, look at this. <laughs> Not an invasion, huh? What does that look like? Right there. They're coming legally, right? Not taking no for an answer. Well, look at this. Oh, wait a minute. Uh oh, what is this? They're not compliant. They need me down there. Because I'm getting mad. Hey, yo, Did you see that mess? I just clicked on that about 15 minutes before the show started. I need to go down there and turn green. These folks have been emboldened. The nerve of these humans down there to muscle past all of the Texas, uh, I guess they're the, um, what are they? Not the armed guards, but uh, what, what do you call it? Uh, Darn, what's, what's the name? I know the name of it. Anyway, I'm so mad right now, I can't think. Yeah, but anyway, they just pushed past those dudes and just kept going. They're Border Patrol. Well, they're actually, I think it's the uh, the National uh, National Guard. So they said, the, the, these are troops. They're down there with machine guns and everything. You think these people care? They just straight pushed through, ran past these folks, ran up to the gate, and the man's like, stop, get back, get the heck back. Does that, does that look like they're coming legally? National Guard, yeah. That, that doesn't look like they're coming here legally, like Joe Biden's talking about. Don't look like these people are coming respectfully. They're to the point now where you're going to let us in. Now, we have no idea who just pushed past all of those National Guardsmen. I know one thing in that crowd, what we didn't see is a lot of women and children. Every single person in that crowd that I can see are men war age men and as they run past there and run up to the next gate the border patrol slash national guard is telling them to get the heck back that's what made me turn green now what i'm thinking is this here we are sovereign country we're asking these people who shouldn't be here to step back, stand over there, wait, don't come across here, and they choose to come anyway, run past us. In that crowd could be murderers, could be terrorists, could be anybody. They have failed to comply. Now, I'm wondering what would happen if our National Guard would have just went live and start firing on them. They would have been demonized. They would have been called, you know what, you guys are murdering these folks. It's a genocide. This right here is uh, not tolerable. But these people are putting our national security at risk. They have no regard for guns and soldiers standing right there. Because in their mind, we got the go ahead from up top. This right here is way above these guys pay grade. We've been watching for years now the, the process. Mucus done hit us. The Democrats done trained us. They've let us know that, you know what, we have benefits and we have liberties that American citizens don't have. We can run past the guards. We can push through the military and come on in because the Democrats aren't going to say nothing. They ain't going to be talking about that now. They're gone too far. These people are, they're up here sensitive about what they call us. Here it is. They're more worried about that. They're more worried about us getting amnesty and getting processed than they are stopping us. So in the midst of these people running through, we don't know who's coming through. At that point, we have to assume this is a hostile invasion. Now, if these were all Russians, if these were all Chinese if these were all people dressed in military outfits, even if they didn't have weapons, if they came up to our border, 
dressed in military outfits, young men, and say, we coming up in that mug. We would say, no, you're not. And if they keep pushing, you know what would happen. But because these people are protected by a political party who done encouraged them, who done emboldened them, they feel they could run past our military and just come on in anyway, knocking folks down. They're not even worried about the consequences. Let me tell you something. There are places right now, if I go to Fort Knox and I decide, you know what, I'm about to run up to the gate, they would open fire on me as an American citizen. If I was to go out to Nevada somewhere, talking about, uh, you know what, I'm about to go and see what's up in uh, these uh, secret facilities out here, see if there's a couple UFOs, and start running down their tours, you know, one of those places, open fire. I might get one warning. Stop. That's about it. If I was to go up to the White House and I'm not Antifa or if I'm not, you know, Black Lives Matter, if they if they if I got an American flag shirt on or something like that and I hop that fence and start scooting straight towards the White House, I might get a warning shot to my feet first. Then after that, bang, bang. But yet all these people just ran across. Now, what is the next level to stop something like that from happening? See, th this is what, what concerns me. When they've gotten to that level, they're like, wow, we could push past these people and nothing will happen. Somebody said, why didn't they get a, a notification? I'm not sure. That's why I let everybody know I'm here every night at seven. So, you know, just in case you don't get them. But now, what was the next level? When we see, we, we got to that point now where, you know, there's this group that decided we're just going to go straight past. What is the next level to stop these people? Because, I mean, heck, they feel like, hey, I got a right to be here. Get out of my way. I'm coming in. This is an embarrassment to our country. It right now is an embarrassment to the troops down there. It's an embarrassment to law enforcement, to uh, Border Patrol. And um, it's sad to say that we have traitors and our government that is allowing this to happen to us and tying the hands of people who want to stop this, because I guarantee you, um, any of those soldiers, if they would have resorted to any type of physical force or God forbid, deadly force. Um, now, granted, I'm not suggesting you open fire on unarmed people running across the border, but you have to assume that they're hostile. So, I mean, I'm not saying you need to open with live rounds, but something needs to deter these people when they feel they can just run past you and you sitting there with a machine gun. That right there is the last warning. That's what makes most folks say, wait a minute. That gun right there means I got some serious resistance. I might be able to push this dude around, but that gun is going to make up the difference. But when you no longer fear that. What, what, what do you want us to do? Harsh language. You hear there was a guy at the gate when they ran up there. He's like, get the F back. Get the F back. You think there's like, Earth? wait a minute. Everybody go back. He's using harsh language. Let's go back over here and wait our turn and follow the rules. No, none of that works. What, the evil eye? Give him the evil eye? This is crazy to me that we even had the nerve to witness something like this. Now, if the Republicans are smart. As Joe Biden and the Democrats are leaving sound bites all over the place, talking about this is not an invasion. These people aren't illegal. These people are just undocumented citizens. These people right here are our first priority. All of those sound bites, compose them, put them together, and then show that clip right there of these precious illegal immigrants, gentle woodland creatures coming for a better life that we can't criticize or define and call them what they are, legal immigrants. Look how they're doing our military, our border patrol. That's how they repay us for all of the blessings that the Democrats have taken from us and given to them. That's what they're running here for. They're like the Democrats offered a lot of things. You think these guns are going to stop us? Mucus told us we could come. And wherever else they're from, they could be from Yemen, they could be from Iran, we don't know. We don't know. So guys, sorry to have to open up with something like that, but man, it hit me like a slow bullet, man. I was sitting there watching this and I'm going, how weak do we as a country look? 
and we've been weakened on purpose. China would be busting a gut right now watching that happen. Do you think if maybe three or four thousand Americans showed up at the Chinese border and start pushing our way past it, we wouldn't even make it close to the border? Yeah, and the God forbid we get to the border and they talking about stay right there and we go, man, you're going to get and run past them. Open fire, China, any place, almost any country in the world, okay, that ain't dumb like us. They would never let this happen. So, we need Trump. We need him back. Somebody send up the Trump signal. Yeah, we need him back. We need to get rid of these rhinos. And these people who did this to our border after we clean this mess up, they need to be prosecuted, man. Prosecuted. So, guys, let me get my blood pressure down. I'm starting to come. Shh, 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 shh. The sun is going down, big guy. The sun is going down. All right, I'm back. I'm back. Speaking of which, Joe Biden, who got up there just a second ago talking about some undocumented, undocumented. I shouldn't have said that. Let's take a look at dumb and then dumbest, okay? See, oftentimes we talk about dumbest, which is Joe Biden. He's the dumbest. But we, we sometimes skip over dumb, okay? Uh, which is his backup quarterback, Chameleon Kamala Harris. I, I figured today we'll go ahead and focus on dumb and dumbest. First, dumb, though. Let's, get, let's, let's go ahead and, and highlight dumb. <laughs> dun, 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 dun. So let's check out dummy. Oh, first the dummy. Oh, dumb, then dumbest. We're getting the dumbest in a minute. The challenge that we have as an administration, okay. we got to let people know who brung it to them. <laughs> man, I don't know who that lady is, but first of all, she got her down, packed, man, <laughs> mouth wide open, <laughs> but you see the overdramatic laughing and stuff, the clapping, you would think Kamala Harris is, every time she busts out laughing, you would think she just walked into a Eddie Murphy concert, a Richard Pryor concert, something like that, laughing that hard for nothing, man, <laughs> you're supposed to reserve those type of laughs for something funny. Yeah, she's busting the gut, and this girl got her down, man. Let's get in one more time. Yeah, let people know who brung it to us. I gotta find out who this lady is. <laughs> <laughs> she's good. She's good. <laughs> <laughs> Look at the mic just slapping in the leg. <laughs> oh man, look, the fall over is gonna get me. There it is. <laughs> I've said many times. And that's exactly how she, she acts. She acts like everything's the funniest thing in the world. Now, I laugh a lot when I'm making fun of these people. Sometimes I even laugh at my stupid my own stupid jokes. But good grief. If you gotta have some self-awareness. If I realize that first of all, my laugh is unpopular. They make fun of my laugh. I got one of those weird laughs, like <laughs> something like that, or snort. <laughs> and I start seeing people all over the internet memeing me, <laughs> laughing at me. I would be more conscious about when I unleash the beast. I would be like, man, I shouldn't break this laugh out unless it's absolutely necessary. I'm not going to sit there and have an uncomfortable, nervous laugh like she has. And I'm supposed to be taken seriously and respected. Now, if that lady can make a mockery of Kamala Harris, <laughs> that's fairly accurate, with the exception of a little more dramatics, um, what do you think other world leaders are doing? That, that's my question. Uh, somebody says she has a YouTube channel. I'm going to have to find her. Uh, other leaders are looking at body language. They're looking at these type of behaviors, composure, and stuff like that. But then they're also looking at your ability to communicate and does it make sense. So let's go ahead outside of the laugh. Let me go ahead. I don't want to judge her just by the cackle. Okay, we already know she got that. <laughs> yeah, the witch cackle, uh, which I don't know how her white husband can stand it. So, you know, I got to say it like that because uh, she's pro-black and, you know, down with the struggle and stuff, but she's, she's married to a white husband. See, he said white husband. I don't know how he can stand it, but he's, he's, he's benefiting off of his white privilege, married to the soul sister number one 
always down with the struggle. So now let's see what she's talking about. I believe, I think we all both the same believe, nobody should have to go to jail for smoking weed. What? Nobody should have to go to jail for smoking weed. <laughs> <laughs> she put over 1,500 people in jail for marijuana violations and then laughed about it when she was asked if she ever smoked marijuana. Oh, I remember that day. That was the day her career should have ended. And technically it did. But the Democrats needed another puppet. They needed somebody who was just as ambitious, money hungry, power hungry, and corrupt to come on in and also check a couple boxes. We need the women and we need the black folks vote. So let's go ahead and get rid of Pete Booty. Give him a position within, uh, you know, what you call it. Bernie Sanders, let's shaft him and bring Kathleen Kamala in after all the things she said about creepy sleepy. Oh, man. So she got embarrassed for her hypocrisy uh, during that time. And now here she is talking about nobody should go to jail. For smoking weed. Nobody should have to go to jail for smoking weed. Now, what people perhaps had never seen before okay. can be seen to know what's possible. Okay, wait a minute. But the brilliance of this inaugural class. Okay, this is a Nancy Pelosi in the making. I mean, I can hear a little bit of that in her voice. I'm surprised she's not hiccuping like that stork on Bugs Bunny. Okay, uh, congrat congratulations. Congratulations. You all are the brand new recipients. <laughs> Listen to her, man. <laughs> so she sounds like she's slurring a little bit, slash not making sense. And its leaders is the ability to see what can be. Here it is. Famous line. Unburdened by what has been. Oh, God. And then to make it real. There it is. That's the drunk aunt at the picnic. Come on, baby. Come on. Come and sit on your aunt. I ain't seen you in so long. <laughs> Let me say something. You, you, you got to look what you're in yourself, see? Because if you find the, the, the deep down in yourself, baby, you can do whatever you want to do. Okay, I, I, I just want to go play kickball. Now, come, come here, sit, sit down. I want to, I'm trying to taste something. I'm trying to taste something. And you sitting there like, mama, can you make her stop? Because I just want to go out and play tag with the rest of the kids. But I got a drunk aunt sitting here philosophizing, vomiting up all of this stuff. And I don't know what she's talking about, and neither does she. <laughs> so let's finish hearing her give these young people words of encouragement. I'm pointing to the direction of what I believe is the capital. Because she really don't know. That's an actual, <laughs> I'm pointing in the direction, I, I assume, the capital. Is that the capital? Okay. All right. Uh, uh, wait a minute. Where, where are we again? Are we, are we in, uh, the, no, we're in the Ukraine? The same Eastern. Okay, wait a minute. All right, the, the, okay. The Capitol is um, it's a building that is in uh, somewhere in Washington. Is this what? This is Washington, right? That's how she's talking right now. And all other world leaders are going. Can you believe they put this chick in office? <laughs> <laughs> there it is. And what needs to happen in terms of people who otherwise have evidenced themselves being having a feckless quality? to show some courage to reject the- Good grief, to show some courage. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> and she got to have, the nerd to have the joker when she's laughing. <laughs> she's evil while she's laughing. I mean, look, the eyebrows are up. She's got that joker look while she's laughing. She can't even suppress the evil when she's laughing. False notion that suggests you either in favor of the second amendment or you want to take everyone's guns away. You know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? She reminded me of this dude named Scotty Parker growing up in high school. He was a pretty man. You know, tall, handsome, sweet basketball player. But I never saw Scotty Parker sober. How do you get that much money and access to alcohol in high school? <laughs> he went to another school. Every time we see him. Yo, Scotty, what's up, baby? <laughs> what's up? Only time that man was sober is when he was out playing basketball. Other than that, he's drunk. <laughs> and he had the same body movements. Yeah, that's that I'm uh, barely in control of my factories movement. One time he was talking to a chick, trying to rap to her. And his boys was like, come on, Scotty, man, let's go. He said, hold up, man, hold up for a second, right? Looked at her, 
and says, so come on, baby, what you going to do? And step, he stepped there for a second. looked like he nodded off right there <laughs> for about five seconds. Then came back up. Yeah, so what you going to do? And I'm going, she reminds me of Scotty Parker. She looks like she's drunk constantly, body movements, everything. So let's finish seeing her go ahead and embarrass herself even more. When in fact, it's just reasonable. I support the Second Amendment, I but it's reasonable to say we need an assault weapons ban. Come talk to us. It's reasonable to say we need universal background checks, okay. that we need red flag law. You know what I'm <laughs> it's reasonable to say that if you want to deal with violence in the community, you also got to get to understand it's not only about mass oh God. shooting, Situation. I didn't know where that was going. <laughs> it's not only about mass. Okay. Going to church ain't going to help you. Saying the rosary. Oh, wait, that ain't the type of mass I'm talking about. Okay, wait. Ma mass. Wait, what kind of mass was I talking about? Okay, okay yeah. Mass shooting ain't going to help you. So let's see. Here we go. Which are horrific. And it's about everyday gun violence. Because when we think about the strength of our democracy, you know, I think that there's a duality to the nature of democracy. When it's intact, oh, it's so strong. Oh, that sounded sincere. <laughs> oh, boy. Oh, it's so strong. Now, come here and sit there next to Auntie, okay? Hold on for a second. Let me get some more of this black velvet. Okay. You want some of this? Uh, no, I'm only seven. Okay. Uh, you know, I started drinking at seven, too. I started drinking it. You ain't too young to start, baby. Now, listen to something. All right. So wait, what was I saying about something? Oh, yeah. See, love and hate, they come together. And when you mix love and hate together, it can be strong, baby. You know what Auntie's saying? You have no idea what Auntie's saying. She's drunk. She'll never remember the conversation. <laughs> so... She's out here talking about something being strong. In terms of what it does to uphold and protect individual rights. Oh, God. You can't find a more superficial fake person to uphold. Now she, <laughs> she's going straight sermon to uphold the light, the spiritual light, baby. You know what I'm saying? You can't let the past hold you back from the future when the past and the future can come together and make music. That's all I'm saying, baby. <laughs> and I was like, can I give auntie some sugar? No! I want to go play. <laughs> You're sitting up here vomiting up philosophies to me. Freedoms. Freedom, so baby. So strong. That's what it is. <laughs> and it's very fragile. It will only be as strong as our willingness to fight for it. As she's fond of saying quite often, she looked quite unburdened by what has gone before in that clip. I mean, what is she talking about? It Man, here we go again. Always getting clowned because we done installed two of the dumbest people on the planet. All right, here we go. Australia's laughing at us again, and I'm going to laugh with them. That's what I'm going to do because I don't know what she's talking about. I can't defend that. If the Australians, but hey, Mike, what the heck is she talking about, eh? I can't be like, well, she's talking about uh, the lo love and the ice and fire is strong. Honestly, I don't know. I don't know. Either. I don't know. Come on, let's all go ahead and cap on her. Here we go. Every time she opens her mouth, it's just absolute nonsense comes out. Like, the, the, the wires not connected properly said unburdened up there. by what has gone before. I don't think anything went before she said. Well, I, she I think opened it, her mouth and started speaking. I think a few beers might have gone before that. <laughs> she talked about the, what it was, the duality of democracy, and then it was like, I had a thought, and then she completely lost it. Yeah. Now, does anybody, after seeing these clips, remember anything about what she was saying? Has anybody concluded the point? Has anybody said, you know what? I see exactly what she was saying. I am totally lost. I can't even duplicate. I can't even repeat. If somebody asked me, hey, I heard you uh, watch, you know, Kamala Harris the other night. What was she talking about? I don't know. Like right now, I'm honest. Do anybody remember or understand what she said and what she's talking about? You might know words. You might caught words here and there. Uh, democracy and gun control and love and is strong. And don't let the past hold you back from the future, babe. But 
to conclude that I actually understood the message. I have no idea. No idea. I mean, if, if they call me right now, Kev, what did she say? What is she talking about? I, I don't know. I just remember fragments, pieces, words here and there, and her looking like she was staggering around. Just yeah, yeah, and we've all been there, right? But just not that often <laughs> where you're like, I had a banging point to make. I cannot think of anything. I'm just going to talk to fill in the time. And she's like that all the time. All the time. <laughs> so, man, uh, it's pretty obvious that they can't run her if Joe goes down. There's no way they can put her in as a backup quarterback. But what I don't get is the quarterback himself. Sucks. He's the worst. So now let's go ahead and get to the dumbest. Oh, yeah. The number one dumbest. Here we go. I'm saying that. Oh, yeah. oh. <laughs> think about what you think about at the time. I said, uh, Here we go. Oh, Look at baby Joe. Look at, I don't think that explains a lot right there. Joe, 70 the years ago. <laughs> I'm saying that. Oh, yeah. oh. Think about what you'd think about at the time. <laughs> that's what you get. That's what you get after a headshot like that. I, mean, I know that's a little funny meme and all, but boy, you, you just got to wonder. You got to wonder. I want to go back through the history like, okay, I do see a little indention in the side of Joe's head. Is that where it, that's where he collided with the door? Uh, so now let's hear the latest. Uh, Joe salad, because, uh, uh, you know, he ain't even got word salads. <laughs> you know, I mean, this is Joe salad. We we can't even, some of them just grunts. They're not even worse. <sighs> so uh, let's go with a Joe salad. Here we go. I said I would impose powerful <laughs> sanctions on Russia and that we destroy and develop. And that we destroy and develop. So we destroy and develop? Isn't that an oxymoron? Yeah, we destroy and develop. We went up, down, right, left. You know, stuff like that. So now we destroyed and developed as he tries to correct a word that he misread again on the teleprompter. He just looks at the D and goes with the first word that pops up in his head that starts with a D. So as we developed, that would destroy, developed. We destroy this myth that somehow they could continue to move without the rest of the world acting. That we deploy additional forces to defend NATO territory. And for all of you who have See, deployed you family, deployed family members of the military. Oh, God. All of you who have deployed families. Now, was he thinking about George Floyd? So, um, anybody got a deployed family member out there? Unreal. Deployed family members of the military. I instructed the Federal Emergency Management Agency, FEMA, to extend full reimbursement through the end of the year. Okay. To state development of the state deployments of National Guard. I'm rooting for you, Joe. I want you to get one of these right, man. Just can you stick the landing on any of them. So now, once again, I have to make my own correction. Now, sometimes he don't even make the correction. He don't even catch it like, you know, uh, what we're about to hear in a second. We're supporting states and cities that have seen a surge in immigrants. Yeah. We've developed federal experts and deployed them. <laughs> <laughs> now we all know that those two words are not together in the teleprompter one's a mistake and one's a correction there it is that's what's happening he reads the mistake first then makes the correction but on a rare moment in time sometimes he reads the one that's correct first and then he corrects his own self and makes the mistake i can't be right i gotta go ahead and flub it up let me go ahead and say the word that was the first thing popped in my head. So here we go. And <clears throat> widely developed by a Democratic president, deployed by a Democratic president. I got people in international credibility as peacekeepers, stepping up continuously to serve in the UN peacekeeping missions. Oh, God. I was hoping he would stick this landing. So here we go. Uh, Keith peeping. <laughs> <laughs> Boy, that Jobin language is great. So Keith's peeping, okay. Now he didn't catch that one. Yeah, he blew right past. You're in Keith's peeping missions. The you in Keith's peeping missions since Ireland's first development, since Ireland's first deployment in 1958. And still came right back <laughs> after Keith's peeping and then messed it up again. And our development, not the wait, our deployment. So remember that, guys. We're trying to Keith's peep. Okay, that's what we're trying to do. Yeah, we should be focused on Keith's peeping. 
Growth is strong. Wages are up more than prices. Okay. Inflation is down dramatically. Is Since true? I came to office here in Arizona, because of your investment in American agenda, we've deployed and developed. We've deployed and <laughs> developed nearly eight billion dollars in federal funds to upgrade infrastructure. We deployed and developed. So unfortunately, guys, I was not able to bring it home. I tried. I was hoping for Joe to go ahead and, and run through the finish line, finish something correctly, get one right. But he can't get right. Yeah, he's like that dude off of Life, the movie with Martin Lawrence and Eddie Murphy. Life, remember the character, can't get right? That's who Joe is, can't get right. Yeah, just like a bird, eh? I just want to fly free. Yeah, life, life. So just about to see the dollar signs, very close to a peace of mind. Everything was about to be fine. So now let's go ahead and get into a little more of a serious subject, which is time for creepy's crimes. See, it's one thing to be talking about creepy's brain that ain't working correctly, but uh, that does not excuse his corruption. OK, so we all know that they had. Um, some hearings with my man, Bob Alinsky, a firsthand witness. You can't get better than that. Firsthand witness. He's not the only one. Multiple firsthand witnesses. These are situations where if you have real prosecutors, see, they will say this is, I can, this is too easy of a case right here. You, you want me to really prosecute this? Because I mean, I got... How many first-hand witnesses? I got how many, you know, uh, bank transactions and how many? I, I think this right here, I, I feel bad. It's like taking candy from a baby. That's how much evidence and how many first-hand witnesses you have. However, if you listen to the Democrats, there's no evidence. No evidence. So Tony Bobulinski, for some reason, just decided to come down there and just say, you know, I'm going to invent this whole story about Joe Biden being the big guy and his son and his uncle and all of them are you know, getting money from all these other countries. I'm going to invent this mess in detail. I'm going to invent it in detail. And then not only am I going to invent it in detail, I'm going to keep records of my invention that I came up with. And somehow I managed to get hold to their phones and text myself all kind of criminating evidence. See, that's what I was able to do. Then I was able to go and sneak into their cribs, jump on their laptops, and email myself, making it look like it was them talking about, hey, all right, let's make sure we don't include Joe. He's very sensitive about this, okay? He's big guy stuff, all right? Yeah, all of that. I was able to do all of that, put together all of this, so I could come in here and try to go ahead and say that Joe and Hunter is guilty of money laundering and much more so uh yeah the democrats they they they're they're lost here because they're saying there's this is no way that uh tony bobolinski is telling the truth so let's go ahead and get warmed up before we get to bubble one creepy's crimes y'all mm -hmm. at the same people preaching this mantra know better they continue to lie directly to the American people without hesitation and remorse. Rep. Dan Goldman and Jamie Raskin, both lawyers. Two of the slimiest slime balls on the earth. You can't catch that ball is so slimy. If you throw Raskin, uh, he'll slip right through your hands. <laughs> like a squeegee. So those two slime balls are pretending that there's no evidence. They're defending this traitor to our country. That's what they're doing. Democrats don't care because they're traitors to the country too, just like they're defending that open border we got. And Mr. Goldman, a former prosecutor with the SDNY from New York, will continue to lie today in this hearing and then go straight to the media to tell more lies. Yep, just like that. And hoping that, hey, when I drop these lies out there, the media is gonna take them around uh, like a relay. You know, CNN and MSNBC is already in position Soon as those hearings were over, they got the hand back and out come Goldman. Reach. Eh, got it. And there they go with the lies. Uh, today, testimony on the Hill from Tony Bobolinsky was met with serious opposition by the Democrats. Who, uh, so now let's continue because Bobolinsky mad. He came up in there ready for war. 
Come on, Baba. Baba, 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 Baba. Hunter Biden's defense attorney, Abby Lowell, weaponizes letters to Congress to try to smear my name. Mr. Chairman. Uh-oh. Interruption. Interruption. From the Democrats. Because Baba Linsky ain't playing, man. <laughs> so uh, I'm sure Baba Linsky is going to become a Russian agent. Um, and probably he's working with the Kremlin. And this is all Russian disinformation. Uh, so now... Ratskin, I believe, has interrupted because Bobulinski has included them uh, when he talks about these liars. He's calling them out. And it's hard for them to sit back and say, man, he is dead on and just let it fly. Right now, this man know that, man, he has called it. We are liars. We are deceptive. We have been doing this. And I can't sit back and let this go. So I'm interrupting. The cold hard facts. Mr. Chairman. In an attempt to save Mr. his powerfully Mr. connected client Wait. and his father. I challenge Mr. Lowell to make those claims on national television so he can be held accountable for his lies. Prior to my successful business career, I was an officer in the United States Navy. At Navy's elite naval nuclear power training command, I later Somebody said, surprise he lived to testify. That is the truth. And how? I don't know uh, where he's hiding out at, how he was able to dodge all these bullets. Uh, but yeah, there he is. But see, here's the crazy part. He's not the only. Do you know how many people have come throughout these last two years since the Republicans have been in power that have come up there with firsthand knowledge and testified and still nothing ever became of it? I mean, see, that that's one of them things where I think the strategy becomes overwhelm the public with these folks that's testifying. Don't even fight them. Just discredit them. Say, they're crazy. They're all out there talking. These are um, uh, uh, conspiracy theorists. It's like how they make people lower their sensitivity about extraterrestrials. Yeah, they're lunatics. They're crazy. Let's not fight them. Let's go ahead and, you know, encourage them. Oh, you saw a UFO, huh? <laughs> yeah, so they just let these people come testify. And then they walk away. And they end up paying more of a price than the people they're testifying against. Reputation gets smeared. They get labeled as a conspiracy theorist and might even find themselves as a Russian agent. Who knows? I served as a chief, uh, the command's chief technology officer. Uh oh, interrupt. I apologize for the disruption from the. From the, the Democrats? Am I supposed to say it's my time, Mr. Raskin? Yeah. <laughs> oh, see, you done messed up and messed around with a hardcore dude. Tony Baba ain't playing. Yeah, he already know what y'all up to. Am I supposed to say this is my time, Senator uh, uh, Congressman Raskin? So why are you interrupting my time? I'm reclaiming. If I was Bob, I'd be like, I'm reclaiming my time. It's my time. So he had to interrupt y'all because he was taking a beating. But please, Mr. Bobolinsky, please. Look at him laughing. They love it. No order. Uh, Mr. Bobolinsky, Mr. Bobolinsky, please okay. proceed. Okay. Please proceed. I apologize for the disruption from the minority. Okay. Well, Mr. Chairman, it saved his time, but he called members of this committee liars, and I just want to know what... I just want to know how he know that. <laughs> we all know you're liars. Poodle up top. Bang on it. Something's going on with the poodle. Somebody done went ahead and tried to cut the poodle and left, you know, a big ball spot in the back, too. The poodle used to be full. It went from full to completely gone. Then it came back, and it looked like it had a bath laying down. But somebody... Tried to get a poodle a haircut and left the whole back out. So now, here's Poodle laid down, okay, is trying to uh, say what that he said that we were lying. That is absolutely true. <laughs> Whether the order and decorum requirements of House Rule 11 apply to witnesses appearing before the committee. There's hard line, there's decorum from the members. We've asked for that. There's no language that I'm aware of pertaining to a witness. So shut your mouth, Poodle up top. In fact, that Poodle don't even look like it had a bath. It looked like somebody just messed his hair up. Good grief. At some point, you got to let it go. You look better with the do-rag on, man. Shave that mess off. It's going every which way now. All right, so let's continue, though, because Tony Baba ain't done with him. Thank you. So, so uh, to the money flow, because this is, this is where the, the rubber meets flow. the road. 
On August 3rd, they actually stipulate through WhatsApp text messages the exact stipulations of the deal. On August 4th, $100,000 is wired into Owasco PC from CEFC infrastructure. Mr. Chairman, I want to submit for the record a, a, a portion of the bank statement for the time period August 3rd of 2017 to August 31, 2017, I guess that, I guess stipulating $100,000 going from CEFC into the bank account of Hunter Biden through Owasco PC. Wow. Now that that's what circumstantial evidence right there. Okay, because that that that's not like hardcore evidence right there, right? Oh, so that is hardcore evidence. They did they have the actual report. Okay, okay. So let me write that down. Hundred thousand dollars from the C. Okay, all right. What else? With that objection, to ordered. On August eighth. August eighth. Four days later, five million dollars is then transferred from the Northern International Capital account of five million dollars to. Hudson West the third. Hudson West the third is a bank account controlled by Hunter Biden. What? Five million dollar? Well, wait a minute. So, so wait. Just Hunter got five million dollars. Does it? Does it say? Excuse me. I'm sorry. I got some questions. Does it say what the money was for? No. Did Hunter sell a whole bunch of crack to China? So he's not selling nothing to him. They just gave him five million dollars. Okay. Okay. Let me put that down then. Okay. Because see, I'm trying to get all my facts together so you know i can come to some conclusions by hearing both sides arguments okay so we got five million dollars going to hunter okay and mr gon wing aka kevin dong who is a cefc associate that money comes from the northern international capital a bank account a bank account that is tied to the ccp whoa wait a minute so these are starting to look like facts that are kind of blind okay so wait it's uncontested a bank Okay, CCP, that's what CCP, so you're down with CCP? Okay, yeah, you know me. Chi, that's who's down with CCP, so that's the Chinese. Okay, here we go. Mr. Chairman, I want to submit for the record the bank statement demonstrating that transfer. Submit that. that to order. Okay, moving on. Okay, moving on. On August 8th, the same time period, there is a wire transfer of $400,000 to Owasco PC from the how the, the hudson west the third bank account that four hundred thousand dollars mr chairman i have the transfer records in the bank accounts from the august time period i want to submit that for the record Without so wait wait what's it all right now are we sure those are actual trans um transactions from the bank okay because they're not made up or anything so that's hardcore evidence that's undisputed okay all right, so I got that to four hundred thousand. Uh, we're up in the millions now. Uh, well, yeah, me, okay. All right, so now let me see. Here we go. That objection to order. Now here's where the fun stuff comes in, everybody, and I got a minute to do it. So we don't get, get this the done. Fun stuff yet? On August fourteenth. August fourteenth. There is a hundred and fifty thousand dollars that is transferred from a Owasco PC, which That's is controlled tiny. by Hunter Biden, to oh, Lion God. Hall Group, which is controlled by James Biden. Oh wait, 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 wait. It's a family affair. That's what it is. We are criminals. Yeah, yeah. So they're transferring money to each other, right? Okay. But don't worry, though. Don't worry, because, see, there's still no evidence that shows that the big guy is involved in this, okay? So right now it's just money from China to Hunter to his uncle. Okay, here we go. I have the records here, Mr. Chairman, of the $150,000 that has gone to Lion Hall Group from Owasco PC. I want to submit that for the record. Without objection to order. On August 28th, and I believe we have a screenshot for everybody in the room. On August 28th, Mr. Chairman, we have the withdrawal ticket from Lion Hall Group that is signed is by Sarah Biden, who is the wife of Jim Biden, for $50,000 to... Wait a minute. Since when did she get in business? I don't remember her. Being a part of the family business of what, what is she do again? Cause somebody tell me what's her role in uh, is she a consultant for China? Why does she get fifty thousand dollars? I don't understand. You, you know what? I'm not gonna I'm not gonna major in details like that. Okay. It is kind of peculiar that not only she, but then their grandchildren also was getting money. I I didn't know the kids was consulting for China either, but they, that's neither here or there. Let's continue. Withdrawal from Lion Hall Group. I want to submit that withdrawal receipt for the record. That objection to order. On September 3rd, uh -oh. on August 28th, actually, Mr. Chairman, we have the deposit reference into Sarah Jones Biden's account on the same day she withdrew it from Lion Hall. Same I want to submit that in the to order. Last document. On September 3rd, 2007, okay. from Sarah Biden's own personal account. Hold up. Now that's on the screen. That don't say James Biden or Hunter Biden on that check. That says Joseph R. 
steaming for Robinette. Biden Jr., $40,000 for what? It's a check that is written to, to Joseph Robinette Biden Jr., the president of the United States today, for $40,000 signed loan repayment. A loan repayment, by the way, that Joe Biden's own personal accountant, Mr. Eric Schwerin, has no record for. Well, isn't that odd? Well, I uh, forgot to tell you about that $40,000. And don't worry, I, I gave it in cash. There it is. <laughs> He's going to have to pull a fat, phony fanny. It's all in cash. We only dealt in cash. That's what we did. Everything's in cash. I want to submit that for the record, Mr. Chairman. Without objection, to ordered. To the members of the committee, it is clear that the source of this money came from CEFC. Hmm. And that CEFC is a company that is directly linked to the CCP wow. and, and uh, actually the chairman of the CCP. The cha You're down with CCP? Yeah, you know me. Joey is down with CCP. Him and Hunter. Chairman of the Chinese Communist Party, Chairman Xi Jinping. With wow. that I yield. Man. Now, all right, I got all my notes. That's hard to dispute. Those are hardcore facts. So let's see how the Democrats do. Let's see. Uh, on the American people. But after turning over every stone and going down every rabbit hole, okay, including interviewing Victor Shokin and Slachewski, the owner of Burisma, did you ever find the smoking gun or any evidence? Wait a minute. Where's all the facts and the, and the receipts? And this? Why you got show and tell big old blown up pictures of Giuliani and some other guy? That That's not facts. That's just show and tell. That's propaganda. Let's see. It's that Donald Trump was looking for to paste on Joe Biden. On the contrary, uh, Representative Raskin, this guy? Uh, not only did we keep hitting dead walls and not finding the smoking gun, but we kept running into uh, sources of the information that was coming out of Russia. Today I ask... There it is! There it is. Darn it! Now, I can't use my common sense anymore because Russia's involved. I don't want to be deemed as uh, a traitor and supporting the Kremlin. So I got to suspend all of that evidence, all of my common sense. Because look at that. They said Russia. They said Russia. Oh, boy, I tell you, that's like racism, sexism, xenophobia. Russia's in there, too. <laughs> so Russia now is somehow involved in all of that. You think Russia had anything to do with those payments coming from China? No. Okay, I was wondering about that too. And he's talking about he saw no smoking gun because maybe he's carrying the gun. See, uh, either that or he's just walking past it as flames are shooting off of it. I don't see nothing. I don't see nothing because you have to be blind. So that man right there, we looked all over and we didn't find anything because he's walking around like, yes, I, I, I'd like to say that uh, I didn't see anything over in U Ukraine. Uh, he's hitting us with the Stevie Wonder. Because I'm just looking at uh, all of that evidence that Byron just laid out. I ask you to consider the following. In nearly a year traveling the world and interviewing officials in different countries, I found precisely zero evidence of the Biden's corruption in Ukraine. No credible source has ever provided proof of criminal activity. What's a credible source? No credible source is that, yeah, credible to who? You mean like Blase Ford who's back? That's supposed to be a credible source? Or what about... Eugene, whatever her name is, the crazy chick. That's right, Anderson. Are she credible source? See, so they're raggedy sources that they bring out to prosecute Trump. But yet you got folks over there in Ukraine, like the guy who got fired, the prosecutor, who was like, yeah, they fired me because I was looking into uh, Burisma. Uh, you even have the former president on the phone, obviously letting Joe Biden know the only reason that I fired this guy is because you told me to, and the guy didn't do nothing. Nothing. Not to mention, he's talking about how he got insurance policies of conversations and recordings of him and Joe, just in case it goes south or they try to make him unexist. But no evidence whatsoever. Not including Joe Biden on TV talking about, and I told him, fire that prosecutor. They ain't getting the money, son of a gun. No evidence. No evidence like Joe telling everybody, never met with my son's business partners. And he's in pictures playing golf with all of those folks from Ukraine and his son. No evidence. Not the FBI, CIA, nor the NSA. Should we believe those guys? 
<laughs> the ones that came up with the Russia collusion, delusion, the ones that buried that laptop, the ones that didn't want us to see that uh, document showing that Biden was trying to manipulate some money and stuff like that. And then we don't know what happened to the audio. We don't know. We still don't know where that one's at. All of those guys right there, the ones that was ripping down people's comments and stuff off the Internet. No respectable Ukrainian official has ever said that the Biden did, did anything illegal, including former President Poroshenko and former Prosecutor General Yuri Lutsenko. Even when CEO Burisma, Nikola Zlachevsky, was offered a deal by Rudy Giuliani in exchange for information on the Bidens, he provided none, because there is none. Because they told him, hush up, boy! The only information ever pushed on the Bidens in Ukraine has come from one source, and one source only. What? Russia, Russia and Russian, and Russian agents. agents. Oh, God. Mishka, Mishka. I don't know why they always blame Mother Russia. We don't even, we're not involved in the Americans' uh, corruption. I have my own corruption over in uh, Russia, not the Americans' corruption. It's unreal. Somehow, <laughs> Russia now is involved in this. Boy, I tell you, they beat the heck out of that Russian dead horse. The impeachment proceedings that bring us here now are predicated on false information spread by the Kremlin. Oh, and Mr. God. Chairman, I'd like to enter for the record an article from today's Daily Beast entitled Texts Reveal More Russia Ties for Key Anti-Biden Witness Bobolinsky. Oh, God, there it is. McCarthyism. Now, Bobolinsky is about to be tied to the Kremlin. You see how it works? Let's go ahead and anything, no matter how clear, how obvious the evidence is, all we got to do is slander anybody. Remember, they, they called Kelsey Galbraith, called her, uh, Hillary Clinton came out and said she was a part of the Kremlin. Everybody's a part of the Kremlin. Everybody's working with Putin. Putin should be flattered that they give him that much power. I mean, everybody is involved with Russia. So now, you know the path they're going down. Russia's involved, and Bobolinsky somehow is tied to the Russians, and all of this right here is a, a Russian ploy to what? Help Trump get elected again? This is ridiculous. They should be embarrassed to try to keep pulling this crap. But they keep pulling it because the media keeps backing up these fake narratives. And the dummies that are out there casually paying attention to this or suffering from Trump derangement syndrome, they love this type of stuff because that helps them cope. See, so let's go ahead and continue hearing this. Okay, Daily Beast, without objection. But wait a minute. Look at this, more dim theater. Look at this, look at this food. There's Pooty. Yeah, Pooty's interfering right now. Look at it. Man, he bold. He bold to show up at one of these meetings up in Congress. Set the record straight, Pooty. Set the record straight. Oh, wait a minute. Why is Pooty taking off his face? Why is he taking off his face? Don't tell me this is a serious congressman up there dressed up like Vladimir Putin walking into the hearing don't tell me that this is about as bad as them bringing the bucket of chicken that one time so man here i am got my got my chops all wet for poot i'm waiting for pooty i'm sitting like pooty about to drop some oh, oh, that's, oh, that, wait, wait hold on that ain't pooty that's oh it's a democrat in disguise so let's see what this Democrat had to say. Look at the fool. Here he comes. Here comes the fool. Personally, do you believe he should be impeached? I do. Okay, and you believe that because you believe Chairman Comer has proven that he committed a high crime and misdemeanor. And I believe you got the big nose, no chin look from the side. Nose is out here, chin's way back here. There you go. The big nose, no chin look. So now let's see what big nose, no chin has to say when Bob Alinsky hit him with this. No, because I know that he committed high crimes and misdemeanors. Okay. I was involved in seeing them happen. Right, but obviously. Oh, no. <laughs> That's why he ain't got no chin. Oh, because Bobolinsky knocked it off. <laughs> Here he is thinking he was about to get him, y'all. Only reason you believe this because Chairman I was on side. Uh, that, that's right. No, I believe it because I was right there and I saw it with my own eyes. Oh, God, that wasn't the answer that I was expecting. Well, no further questions. And now, guys, here we go. Oh, yeah. Wow. She was more like a doodoo queen on a doodoo screen. I pay no mind, but what do you mean? She's a congresswoman. 
She's bubblehead AOC number one. Without a doubt, she's just dumb. She's AOC, she's bubblehead number one. People always told me. So here we go. Let's see what Bubble One has to say about it. Bubble. Dr. Bobolinski, I, I I heard your opening statement. It's submitted to the record, part of our proceedings. I have a quick question. Simple. Is it your testimony today that you personally witnessed yeah. President Joe Biden commit a crime? Okay. I believe the fact that he was sitting with me while I was putting together a Did you deal, witness the but, president commit it, it, a crime? You better watch your tone. That's what you better do. Just got here, can't tell, been here, nothing. Okay? That's the first thing you need to do, dummy. You can't be a dummy getting all out of control like that. So now, this chick, who is probably number two as the dumbest people in Congress right here, uh, I got to give number one on on that the Democrats house side to uh, Cory Bush. She she's 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 pretty dumb. I'm talking like slug type dumb, algae type dumb. Uh, AOC is right up there to uh, maybe some moving microorganisms, things like that. That uh, maybe she's uh, you know a, a worm 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 brain. There you go. She got maybe a worm brain, something like that. Um, but now here she is. Throwing a whole bunch of base. Okay, so we already know where this is going. This is about to be drama. Somebody gave her a couple talking points. She's going to try to go ahead and get a sound bite and be, you know, appear to be smart like she knows what she's talking about. Now, she knows that she could never hold a candlestick to the level of experience, wisdom, and intelligence of Bobolinsky. I don't even know why she's trying to come from a position of authority and an expert in all of this stuff. When all you do is embarrass yourself. When you come out there trying to use fancy words and concepts that's way above your pay grade and your brain capacity, you end up looking stupid. Now, she's going to be moralized on the Internet for this performance and will probably get reelected. Is it your testimony today? Yes. And what crime? <clears throat> Do you have you witnessed? How much time do I have to go through? It is simple. You name the crime. Uh, Did you watch him steal something? Cor corruption statutes, RICO and conspiracy. What is it? What is Ara. what is the What is what is? She do got those horse Now the real AOC comes out. Let's continue. Crime, sir. <laughs> you specifically. You just, uh, Actually, a horse would probably be a little smarter than her. Mr. Ed, I'm Mr. Ed. He might be a little smarter than her. You keep up. You, you asked me to answer the question. I answered the question. No. Nico, you're obviously not familiar with. Oh, Trump's excuse status. me, sir. Uh oh, Ex uh oh. Now he done offended her. She about to put him in his place. Okay. Did you just? You say I ain't familiar with Rico? I know Rico. He lived right down the street. He used to come to the bar all the time. Shoot, I used to give him drinks all the time. He's kind of cute, honestly. But you know what? They're really up to. I ain't even seen Rico. Oh, I know you mean the crime, Rico. Oh, uh, okay, wait. <clears throat> uh, so, uh, I know about R Rico. Uh, Google, what is Rico? Okay, well, you know what? It's not pulling up fast enough. I can't get service. So I'm going to have to wing it. I'm going to have to make it up, AOC. Come on, girl, you can do this. Here you go. <laughs> Excuse Ara. me, sir. Excuse me, sir. Rico there is, is not a crime. It is a category. Yes, protect that bubble head. Go get that helmet for that bubble. We don't want to pop that bubble. Pop, pop that bubble. Yeah, when she has to think too hard, it might pop her bubble. So, yeah, we got to protect AOC from herself. I answered the question. No. Rico, you're obviously not familiar with... Excuse me, sir. Excuse me, sir. Excuse me, sir. Excuse me, sir. Rico is not a crime. It is a category. What is it's the a category crime? of crime that you're then charged? You have charges. A long hundred. You list have charges, statutes. sir. Yeah. Please you want me to name, name the exact statute sir? under Rico. Yes. I'll, well, it's funny in this committee room. Everyone's not here. There's over eight. All right, sir. I reclaim my lawyers time. Lawyers, the reclaim the law school. I reclaim I'll leave my time. You. Of course, you reclaim your time. Yeah, you never intended on letting this man speak. Hey, you were intending on making a show, but what you didn't expect is for him to name a crime. You thought he was going to say, actually, I don't have any 
you know, firsthand knowledge of him actually committing a crime. And he surprised her by saying, yes, I do. So she thought she can go off and say, what crime? I want you to name the crime. Won't even let him talk. Won't even let him get a word in. Okay. And when he drops off Rico, she's like, what is Rico? Okay. Right. Well, well Rico is not a crime. Okay. It's not, it, you know what? It's a category. But see, I'm wondering then, should we go ahead and throw out that category when it comes down to Donald Trump? Because, I mean, Rico is not a crime. It's a person. I told you he lived down the street from me. Okay, he used to come to the bar. One time he tried to holler at me. I was like, you know what? You're trying to get over with this Puerto Rican booty? Let me tell you something. I know I got a little bump in the trunk. Oh, oh, oh wait, oh, it's, okay. Uh, Rick, 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 who are we talking about again? Rico? Rick, Ricketts? Okay, Ricketts is not. Oh, wait, though, wait, okay. Uh, come on, Bubble. Come on, Bubble One. All right, so let's finish here in Bubble One. Try to go ahead and school Bob Alinsky. Guys, hey, thank you, sir. I reclaim my time. Mm. Clearly, I don't what, know what we are seeing about. here today is a continuation of the 15-month saga of the Republican majority lost in the desert. Hmm. Impeachment 101. The majority party or whomever is raising impeachment must accuse the president of a high crime, a specific high crime or misdemeanor. I now, here's the funny part about that. That didn't go right for her at all because she didn't expect Bobulinski to actually identify crime. And if you're brought up on RICO charges as the president, then you might fall into the category of high crimes and misdemeanors. But she couldn't acknowledge that. So she had to divert to some concept that she knows nothing about. RICO is not a crime, I, uh, I don't think. Uh, it's uh, something else, but it's not a crime. Wait a minute, if I say that, then Trump won't be a ch uh, I just put myself in a conundrum. I bet you there's gonna be memes made about me with helmets and, and horses talking for me, and I'm gonna be immortalized on the internet like I always do because I'm a bubblehead. I shouldn't even be in Congress. I should be still serving drinks at the bar and hanging out with RICO. Yeah, he was cute. I re oh, wait, come on, LC. Just get back to the right now. So now, what, uh, what has happened here these last 15 months, I've remained in Congress somehow, and I probably shouldn't even be here. No, that's not what I should be saying. Come on, AOC. Get focused. Oh, darn it. My bubbles are popping every... Okay. <clears throat> get back to Rico. Oh, he was so cute. Anyway, not that Rico. The non-crime Rico. So let's finish <laughs> here about all uh, these high class uh, uh, crimes and misdemeanors that Joe ain't guilty of. I would like to submit to the record HRES 918, the House resolution to open this impeachment inquiry. Okay. Without okay. objection to order. This resolution does not outline a high crime or misdemeanor. It's not here. Now, when we compare. Wait a minute, aren't they doing an inquiry? inquiry? Uh, inquiry? Uh, 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 they, they didn't come with the charges yet. They didn't. They're gathering the information. See, they're building the case. So what are you talking about? Pair, the chairman's opening from his previous opening. He's talking about Ukraine and Burisma and all of this. It is this entire. I was stopping. But like, where's that? <laughs> where's Ukraine? Huh? I'm not an expert on geopolitical. Uh, the, what is that in uh, East Palestine? OK, wait a minute. No, not this. The, is that the East Palestine or the one that's over? in? OK, well, then, you know, I'm not here to talk about that. Uh, I'm here to uh, go ahead and read off of my notes that uh, my assistant here wrote for me. Uh, they put me in a conundrum because I was expecting Bob Alinsky to say, yeah, I haven't witnessed a crime. But he threw a curveball at me. So now I got to look stupid and go for it. Inquiry is based on a blockbuster piece of information. Pull back. Pull back. If I'm her acting coach, I'm like, just easy, easy. We want open up. You're trying to sell it too much. Trying to sell it too much. Now, we all know you're an actress. We put you in office because of that. But you can't let the people know that. Now, pull back. That was in a classified stiff room. And inside that room was a document alleging President Biden directly of a $10 million bribery scheme. A $10 million bribery scheme. Which I have a tendency to believe that was true. Split between him and his raggedy son. For the simple fact, the FBI didn't want to reveal that document and they still won't let us hear the phone call. And for some reason, the man who came out and revealed that has now mysteriously been arrested. Extremely serious. What happened? 
What happened a month ago, Mr. Chairman? That document, the FBI arrested who? the person who offered those allegations. The same FBI that broke down Trump's door? The same FBI that is controlled by Biden, who is under this investigation, and his son too? That FBI? The same FBI that left the dang on laptop inside of a, a closet and didn't reveal it? That FBI? Couldn't be that they have arrested this man and accused him of lying to undermine his testimony. No way. No way, Jose. For falsifying the, his testimony at, to the FBI. This entire impeachment inquiry is based on an, on an actual, provable individual who has lied. Unlike every single <laughs> witness y'all have ever brought against Trump. Every single witness. The clavicle girl. Yes, I wasn't there, actually, firsthand. But I heard that uh, from a hobo that I happened to run across on the street who said he knew someone who knew someone that works in the basement of the White House who actually talked one time with the chef and they were talking about ketchup and they're talking about biscotti and meatballs. And I think that somebody said something about Trump, Trump starting to uh, go crazy and scratch the eyeballs out of all the people in the, what is that, the bus? No, that, there's no such thing as a bus. The bus? He don't ride the bus? Okay, I'm sorry. Then what does what, what the president ride in again? The beast? The, the beast. Yeah, he was in, oh, he wasn't in the beast? Oh, uh, crap. What was he in? Okay. Well, anyway, they said something about eyeballs were being scratched and clavicles were being ripped out. <clears throat> that that's That's my testimony. She's so credible. Thank you. You're so brave. So glad you came up here to spew out more lies and stuff by Liz Cheney. So now, here she is talking about credible witnesses. Now, responsible leadership would, would, would kick you out of Congress. Responsible leadership would mean the Democrats wouldn't even have you a part of the circus. They should have hid you in the closet. Uh, AOC, don't you have to go use the bathroom? But no, it's my turn to uh, question the... Uh, you know, the, no, no, you know, we'll handle here. Just give me your paper. We'll go ahead and handle your questions. Just could you go and get us drinks? We we want some, you know, some Starbucks. We were all thinking we get some star. We're on break. We're on break. It's, everybody said we're on break. She, she, I know she can see me, but she won't even catch it. Don't worry about it. We're, we're all on break. We're all on break. So go get us some Starbucks, please. Is she gone? OK, let's skip her part. All right. Go on to the next person. That's what the whole Democrat should have did. But instead, they stick this dummy out there and make some mockery, like always, when it comes down to the Democrats and their questions. She is embarrassing, not only for the Democrats, but for the whole darn country. So let's continue. Draw an inquiry based on that. Withdraw it. Instead, Instead? what we are seeing Look at her reading. is that this committee was warned yeah. about the falsehoods of these allegations long before that, warned by Trump's Secretary of State Mike Pompeo, Ooh. and yet they proceeded anyway. The chairman proceeded anyway. Mm -hmm. This committee was warned by Rudy Giuliani Associate right here, Lev Parnas. Now, you know what's funny? Do you think AOC looked up any of this information? You know she was probably rushing down there with a donut in her hand and a cup of coffee running into the hearings while some uh, intern was running behind her trying to give her the notes. Okay, we wrote your speech here. Uh, just put it in my bag right here. I'm running late. Got in there, set it down on the table. Like, okay, all right, come on, AOC. Get in a character. Okay, what am I reading here? All right, something about Giuliani. She has, a, if somebody start asking her some detailed questions about that, she would have no idea. No idea. And most of, now see, she's not a lawyer. Some of them are lawyers and they probably do have some leeway outside of their script to go ahead and freestyle and, you know, spar a little bit back and forth. But she's not. See, that's why she had to freestyle with the Rico comment. So, yeah, she's out there all the way on her own. She's relying solely on acting skills and somebody who wrote this speech. Thus, you get the stupid Rico comment because that wasn't included in the speech. It was, all right, this should happen when you ask this question. And it didn't happen. And she didn't know what to do after that. Except for say, Rico is not a crime. 
after that document about the falsehoods of this. Then held hearings where your own expert witnesses said that there was no grounds for impeachment yes. and you proceeded anyway. And finally, finally, as if none of this was enough, the <laughs> FBI arrested the individual who was the source of the entire, to quote the chairman, heart of the matter. That's why he was arrested, dummy. <laughs> you don't understand that bubble? Oh, you probably do. But yeah, that's why he was arrested, because he was the source of all of this. <laughs> he was the guy that probably could put Joe Biden under somebody's jail. And then finally, the FBI that's been corrupted <laughs> uh, then picked out uh, that the source of all of it. To launch this impeachment inquiry and proceeded anyway. At this point, the story is not the fact that the basis of this impeachment inquiry is wrong. Okay. The story is why it's proceeding anyway. Wow, you got something right. Because, see, I was thinking the same thing, Bubble One. Yeah, see, we should go and arrest the source of the, what, Trump collusion thing. Let's go get Adam Schiff. Let's go and grab Hillary Clinton, see, because she was the source of the Russia collusion delusion. Hey, let's get Adam Schiff who backed that mess up. Oh, and then the source of J6. Let's go and grab Nasty Pelosi and throw her in the slammer too. She was the source of all of this. We all know it. And it's going to come out one way or another. But we're going to close with somebody who can make a little more sense of all of this after seeing AOC out there embarrassing herself and everybody who's a part of her family, every ancestor, every Latino, every woman, every every life form, um, we're going to have Jim Jordan sum it up and uh, really drive it home because I, I think that the Democrats, just, they, 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 they're they not able to see the evidence out in plain sight. Unlike Adam Schiff, who been promising, promising us some evidence in plain sight for, for Trump, and we, we never we never seen it. So help him out, Jimmy. Hey, why is this committee proceeding based on false charges? And if there, And by the way, no charges. <laughs> I have yet to hear in the chairman's opening the allegation that they are specifically charging the president of the United States with. I'm hearing about Biden family. I'm hearing about this and that. I am not hearing the specific allegation. Would you know it if you heard it? You didn't even know what RICO charges are. Yeah. So you wouldn't know it if you heard it. All right, uh, we're charging them on Section 3. Uh, the, uh, the, uh, the, the, they throw out something like this. You'd be like, oh, what, what's that one? Hold on, let me Google. Uh, what, uh, uh, we're bringing them up on the uh, whatever act uh, in 1937 it was established by. The, yeah, when they start talking about legal stuff, she's done. She don't know what she's talking about. So she don't realize that this is an inquiry. When they get finished, then they'll decide whether they're going to move forward. And then you'll hear more specifically what they're going after. Um, like, OK, we feel that he should be charged with we're accusing him of this, this and that. But she's getting out over her skis because she don't have skis. She's skiing down the hill barefoot. What, I'm supposed to have skis on? Oh, man. By this committee. What is it? It's not here. And that is is the problem. Like my brain. The story is when this committee knew that they were working with falsified evidence. That's the story. <laughs> no, and you. And with that, I yield back. You became the story with that helmet we had to put on you. And that horse meme, you became the story. So Jim, take us home. Take, take me home. Uh, yeah, because I don't remember. Jim, take, take me home. I don't remember any of the stupidity those Democrats was talking about. So let's go ahead and get somebody who's sensible to go ahead and finish this up. Mr. Bobolinsky, who's the big guy? Are you sure about that? <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Yo, he, he didn't hesitate. <laughs> he didn't pause Joe Biden. <laughs> Who's the big guy? Joe Biden. He's that confident kid in the classroom who knows 100% he knows the answers. We all know one of them in the classroom. Teacher, all right, uh, uh, we're going to go ahead and then we have an open quiz. I'm about to ask questions. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Uh, uh, all right, uh, who invented the... <laughs> and they just know. Uh, Thomas Edison. Immediately. 
So Joe Biden. Doing, uh, Joe you sure? Biden. You sure? I'm a thousand percent sure. Okay. Because when Hunter Biden did his deposition under oath, he said, I don't know who it is, even though he was copied on an email that said H will hold 10 percent for the big guy. So he never questioned that. Let me write that down. <laughs> OK, yeah. Thanks for responding. What the heck is he talking about? The 10 percent for the big guy. Well, I probably should ask who's the big guy. Why is the big guy getting 10 percent? Some mysterious big guy is just getting 10 percent of the money. I'm sure to be fine. This mysterious big guy. I'm sure he's important. So let's continue. I have no idea who this guy, this mysterious guy who's getting 10% of our money, our earnings is. There you go. Now, I mean, if he was smart, he'd just say, man, I was on crack, man. I was all cracked out. I have no idea, man. I was thinking 10% of the crack that I was looking at. I'm like, all right, how much crack I got? All right, 10%. If I, if I snort 10% right now, how much am I left with? He should have went with that. But to say, I have no idea who the big guy is, and you don't even question it? That's not logical. Okay, let's continue, though. You sure it's the big guy? Is, is Joe Biden? A thousand percent. And there's other text messages that back that up, that the brave whistleblowers, Shapley and Ziegler, have produced. Not from my phones, not from my BlackBerry that I took screenshots from. Tell him, Bobby. Tell him. Oh, Got more evidence, man, back the thing up. We got all the evidence back the thing up. So we done backed up all the evidence. We got blackberries that were not destroyed and not bleach bit it and all of that stuff. We got all that evidence. But there's AOC. Rico, it's not a crime. Yeah, Jamie Ratskin, the poodle, talking about Russia. All of that. But you got all this evidence, not including him as a firsthand witness and others. Hmm. They took him from subpoenas directly from Apple's iCloud oh. that back up the fact that Hunter knew the big guy was Joe Biden. The big guy everyone. is the brand. The big guy is the lift. The big guy is the one who showed up at golf outings, who did took phone calls and meetings and lunches and dinners with Hunter Biden and his business associates. Is that right? Correct. So the big guy, a.k.a. is Joe Biden. The one that lied to us and said, Never met my son's business partners, never talked. I didn't even know he was on the board of Barisma until uh, the news told me. What? They were being investigated, had no idea. This is fascinating. And yet these disgusting, stinking, funky, corrupt Democrats are trying to defend this installed puppet that is a traitor to our country and sold us out. They're trying to defend him. And it just goes to show they have no integrity. Their character is blew out. They don't even know what that is. They are just as corrupt as Joe Biden. How can you with good conscience as an American know that this guy was selling us out to foreign adversaries, not just other countries, adversaries for money. And then you wonder why balloons are flying over our country without being shot down. <sighs> Unbelievable. So there you have it, ladies and gentlemen. The big guys revealed, y'all. Tony Bobolinsky. Thank you, Tony. Man, that man's brave. He, he's going up against a lot of propaganda. He's going up against a lot of liars, a lot of evil folks. Uh, and you know Biden, even though he ain't in his right mind, uh, he'll, he'll have garlic. He'll have the FBI or somebody come up with some garbage. You know, um, so we'll see. We will see. Uh, if the Republicans finally pull the trigger and say, all right, man, let's go ahead and throw this dude least. Let's go ahead and impeach him because, see, we're moving at such a slow pace with all of this. I'm thinking, I mean, is it going to even be worth it? I mean, it? How many months out are we? Yeah. Somebody said, Tony, Tony, Tony has done it. It feels good. Uh, yeah. Yeah. It feels good. Yeah. If impeaching, creepy, sleepy, feel good to you, say, uh, uh, baby. So, I want to know if the Republicans are finally going to do it. And if they do it, is it going to be like two weeks before the election? We're still waiting on mucus. And I'm like, well, are they just still gathering evidence? What the heck is going on? Um, and, you know, what, what good is it going to do? If, if they impeach him, which the Senate won't ever convict him, but... If they impeach him and, you know, I'm, I'm starting to wonder now, should we just wait until he's out of office and then let Trump assign, you know, a good investigator 
to look into all of this and then go after him as a citizen, you know, instead of a president. Just, you know what, forget the impeachment. I handle it. I handle it. Y'all already have gathered all the information I need, just like they gathered fake information on me for the January 6th bull crap and then gave it to all these bootleg prosecutors. But instead of that, I got a legitimate reason and real evidence to give to a good DOJ director and say, now go after them, find out what's up with the big guy and see what happened. Oh, God, he's uh, revenging himself. He's uh, he's a dictator that we all said he would be, all said he would be. So we'll see. So God bless y'all. Thanks for hanging out with me tonight. AOC. She always gives us a good laugh. Don't forget, text us number 330-974-4607. Uh, text MAGA to that number to stay connected with me. Don't forget also to um, uh, subscribe to my alternative channel. Follow me on all the other social media platforms. Double check. Make sure you're still subscribed to this channel. Make sure your notifications are turned on all. Hit me with another like on the way out. Okay. Share my videos. And if you want, please check out Kevin's Corner Store or you can support the channel with my monthly fundraiser link. I definitely would appreciate it. So God bless y'all. God bless America. Let's get out of here. But boy, they better. You know what? I almost I almost forgot. I got get caught up laughing at these stupid people. I almost forgot about the invasion that we saw in the beginning of the video. So they better get that mess together. I'm going to be talking about that again tomorrow. So take care. See y'all tomorrow. Same time, same place. Because it's Friday. Yeah. See y'all next time in Camp's Corner. Take care.